For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We live to die. We were born to die. We were born as sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Reach that corporate ladder. Go out to that place you've never been that you want to go. Reach out for that cruise. Reach out for whatever your highest dream is. And reach out to the grave. Because if there's one thing I can promise you in life, there is a grave coming. For the wages of sin is death. You will die. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you die without the gospel, you do not believe on the Jesus Christ that suffered and died, according to the scriptures. You do not believe in the Jesus that was buried. If you refuse the Jesus Christ that God raised from the dead three days, three nights, according to the scriptures, if you choose not to go to Jesus who is God, and God is Jesus, if you elect to go to somebody, something else besides Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins, and you will go to a place called hell. And the words of Jesus Christ, without faith and belief from your heart, and from your mouth will be depart from me, workers of iniquity, still charged with iniquity. I never knew you. And the books will be open. And your name will be checked in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if your faith and if your belief has never been placed upon Jesus Christ, your name will be absent from that book and your being will be absent from God for all eternity in a place called the Lake of Fire. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot access God through religion. You cannot get to heaven by atheism. You cannot reach your paradise, your utopia, by science. You must reach God through the given way of God, that His love, that He gave His only begotten Son, that Jesus again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The same Jesus we've been preaching week after week after week. And yet, rejected week after week after week. It has been scorned week after week after week. And many a time I have opened to the book of Proverbs and I've explained to you why we are here. We are here because the Bible says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. We are here that you may know that Jesus saves. We are here that you may know if you do not believe on Jesus, you're not safe. Being sinners. For all have sinned, come to show the glory of God. So as sinners, we come short. I cannot cross over to the other side without a road. I could not cross over onto Beach Street without that bridge. And you being short by your sins of God, 
You have no access to get to God except by Jesus Christ. And the branch that gets you from life to death and over into heaven eternity is not something that is man-made. It is made by God. It is God. It is the salvation by the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And there's no other way. Now, Satan would have you to believe that religion, education, science, don't believe atheism, not sure agnosticism, Whereas God in the Holy Scripture says Jesus, and only Jesus, you're not going to approach God and say, look how good I am. For the Bible says there is none that do it good. There are none righteous. You are not right enough. You're not good enough. And since you are a sinner, there's a gap. And you've got to cross that gap to God. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when you come to life and you come to death and you step at that edge of the curb and without God you fall off into hell forever. You will go to hell with your religion. You will go to hell believing in your science. Your science will be science fiction in front of God the Father. Love you guys. Thank you. Good to have you here. You make every Saturday for me. <laughs> Your education makes you no knowledge of God. Your degrees, your diplomas, your baptism, your church membership is nil compared to the finished work of Jesus Christ. And if without Jesus you step off into eternity, again you fall into hell and you're tormented forever. And yet, if you were to put your faith and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God, the gospel, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, and you are to step out off to death and in Christ, the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I don't fear death because I'm saved. Now I fear the means of death. I would not want to burn to death. I would not want to be tortured to death. I would not want to be in a building that collapsed in death. But death itself, when you have put your work upon Jesus, you just pass right on over. And you don't even walk. That moment when your body gives up your soul, that body gives up the spirit. And in Christ, the Bible says to be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Your family may be looking at you. They have, may have watched you die. And I've had that happen. But oh, the glorious side that that saved person gets. That moment they are looking at human nature, they are looking at sins, they are looking at a hospital room, they are looking at pain and suffering, and if they are die in Jesus Christ, they will see Jesus. And if you were to come to that mode of death, and here it is, and you're doing it without Jesus Christ, you're in pain, 
your sorrow, you got troubles, you got problems, you got more problems without Jesus Christ because you step off into a place of torment forever with no relief. You step off into hell without Jesus Christ. It gets worse in hell, folks. This ain't hell. You got air conditioning, you got drinks, you got vegetables, you got fruit, you got time to believe on Jesus. This is not hell. Hell is worse. Hell is so bad that God says, I love you. I'm going to send my son that you may get saved. I'm going to send a preacher to you that you may know how to be saved. How sorry your life is hell. Get saved. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And I've got that in my life. Oh, that man is yelling at me. No, that man is excited over Jesus Christ. That man loves the Bible. He's speaking up just as a bunch of idiots making left hand turns. Or hitting a ball. Or his concert. But my thrill is Jesus Christ. My thrill is to preach the gospel to you that you may be saved and know it. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Death is coming. And you and I have no idea when that death curve is coming. In Florida, standing this close, death may come quickly with these drivers. And yet, I could be standing over here, and in my body right now could be death. Death could be for you right there where you are. Death may be anywhere at any time. You know, I'm guaranteed right now, I can save a guarantee. This morning, many people woke up to death. I can honestly say that this morning. And they woke up to heaven by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Or they woke up in hell believing in anything but Jesus. And believe me, there's a hell. Because believe me, there's a God. And the scriptures say about God, he cannot, will not, and never tell a lie. And Jesus himself talk about hell. Contrary to liberal preachers. Contrary to fluffy toed preachers wearing sandals behind the pulpit. Jesus Christ, who is God, spoke about hell and told people about hell and told us he will throw you into hell. And yet the love of God is that God sent Jesus Christ, that you may believe on him, that you may trust in him with your heart. These things have I written unto you, that you may know you have eternal life. And that eternal life is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from what? A place called hell. Now let me assure you today, contrary to other preachers, that if you were to believe on Jesus Christ today, that may not solve your worldly, earthly problems. But it does change your destination from hell to heaven. And then, your mail can be forwarded from hell to heaven by Jesus Christ. But right now, you are on the road to hell. And it's not a highway, contrary to beliefs. You're just walking along, pacing along, buying fruit, paying your bills, stopping at red lights, and then one day, boom, death hits you. 
and death may hit you at any mile point. You may be right now in measurement of feet for death. You may have miles and miles and miles left to go. I don't know. But God knows that you are going to die. And God, in His love, has told those who have believed on Jesus, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, salvation in Jesus is not going to help you after you die when you rejected Jesus. You cannot say, oh, no Jesus now, but when I die, I'll believe on Jesus. That don't work. Salvation of God through Jesus Christ is before you die. He said, well, my family will burn candles for me. What if your family hates your guts? What if that time, oh, they're going to burn that candle. That guy was an idiot. He didn't leave me in his will. I'm not burning nothing from him. You ever think about that? What if your priest is too busy with altar boys to be, have prayers for you? What if your priest is too busy swindling old ladies for their money for prayers that can't help you after you die? you got to believe on Jesus before you die to be saved. The church can't do it. Baptism can't do it. Religion can't do it. And I hope I'm offending you. Because those things can't save your soul. Only by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb without spot, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That is it. That's the only way. Anything else, you burn in hell. And it ain't no party because the alcohol burns up, my friend. Your friends don't want to have anything to do with you because you're tormented in the flames. Your pharmacist in hell can't prescribe you medicine. The doctors in hell can't do nothing for you. They can't do nothing for themselves. The road of religion goes down. It goes to the flames of hell. And you're coming to that edge one day. And you're going to look. And you say, God, I'm going to believe what that man is saying. But I'll do it later. That later may be now. I mean, there are diseases today that happen to people. They lose their mind. This is something that happens. And you may not one day you may wake up not ever to be thinking right again. I'm not making fun of those people. I'm just saying you may get where your mind is just gone. And you have no sense of reality. And then what do you do? You gotta do it now. Behold. Behold, now is the time. It's a point unto men wants to die, but after that, the judgment. And yet you can have a judgment before you die. You can come to Calvary's cross and say, God. I am a miserable, rotten, naked sinner. And only by the blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, can I be saved. Now, that's proper judgment. When you come to God and you judge yourself as 
I am unworthy, I am unacceptable, and I'm unclean. And yet, and yet, through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. You can be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and get your name written down the Lamb's Book of Life forever. I wonder in the four years we've been here, how many are not here? And they're not here because of death. And where are they today? I can tell you an absolute assurity where those dead people are. But I can't tell you when you're going to die. If they died in the faith of Jesus Christ, they're with God right now, praising the Lord. And they are up there with the angels saying, preach it, brother, preach it. Maybe. The Bible says when a man gets saved, comes out of the lost flock, the angels in heaven rejoice. And then the next chapter is those who die without Jesus Christ, they are in hell. Do you know what they're saying? Preach it to my family because I don't want my family to come here. Luke 15, Luke 16, I think. I think it's 15 and 16. The angels rejoice over a lost sinner and a man goes off into hell and wants you to preach to his family. And God, in Mark chapter 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And Proverbs chapter 1, wisdom reaches out in the place of concourse and she preaches to the simple, to the scorners, and the fools. Have you heard that message? And you've heard messages over and over and over about Jesus. And you've heard me mention death. And if you take that step into death without Jesus, you will not rest in peace. You will be T.F. Tortured forever in torments without Jesus Christ. Forever. Put on your tombstone, BFF. Fiery furnace, boiling. Firing furnace forever. Ain't no friends in hell. There ain't no partying in hell. There isn't nothing but torment in hell. Some of you, the Saturdays are the best place to get the hellfire preaching. This is not preached about in churches. What more to hear about Jesus Christ than when you're at a farmer's market? You know all those fruits and vegetables came from God. Are you thankful? Death is coming. And while you're living, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You're more a surety of buying lottery tickets than you are for your soul.
Oh, you come to the L, I can win that million. I can win that big million. Oh, I can win it all. But what if that all fell short of before you died? And if you do win the million, what do you do then? You don't take it with you. You're not going to have pockets standing before God. Okay, God, no, well, let me whip out my wallet. What, where's my wallet? Where's my clothes? So I'll stand naked before God to judge. And the books were open. And the book of life was open. And if your name is not in that book, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And that's that Jesus that just loves everybody saying that. You got to be careful because Paul tells us there's another Jesus. You won't believe the biblical Jesus compared to the worldly Jesus. It took a Jesus of strength to carry out a conversation to save a thief on the other cross. Without medication. Jesus of the Bible, suffering agony, talking with that dying thief, and before that dying thief died, he believed on Jesus. And let me tell you what they didn't do for that dying thief. Stop the actions on Calvary's cross because we got to baptize that guy. It did not happen. That dying thief that believed on Jesus never went to church, was never baptized, he never confirmed. He just believed on Jesus and he saved today. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That simple. Even a child could believe. And that dying thief, even though he's on that cross, had no idea when he was going to die. But he knew he was going to die. When you're nailed to a cross, I guarantee, your death is assured. And in his final moments of death, what did he do? He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Look at the instant salvation. Religion can't do that for you. Before you die, if you want to go to heaven, now maybe you don't. That's your choice. I'm told go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's what I'm doing. That's what, that's what I'm being faithful to. If you want to go to heaven, maybe you don't. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to put your heart in the faith of Jesus Christ to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But there are other ways. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to God. And after four years, some of you people can quote what I've been quoting to you for over the years. And yet, 
It may be in your head, but it's not in your heart. You have got to come to the realization of your heart. Your faith and trust must be on the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. And nothing else. You go to church to fellowship and grow. You do not go to church to be saved. You get baptized for a public testimony to your friends and family. But the baptism does not save you. You be good so they don't put you in jail. But being good cannot save you. Death is coming. And we don't know when. So now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I'm assured, I'm not guaranteed, but I'm assured somebody at this farmer's market has died within four years. And they did not die with the faith and belief in Jesus for whatever reasons. And they are in hell today. And according to the Bible, they may not even regret it. They just acknowledge they're in torment. Luke 16. But if there has been someone here in four years of this farmer's market, whether before we came or after we came, if they put their faith and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and have died, they are with Jesus today. And they are doing much better than what I am doing. The only way to get your name in the reservations of heaven through the last book of life is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. God does not take check, He does not take credit, and He does not take works. He only takes the precious blood of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and according to Acts 20:28, 20, that blood is God's blood. No blood, no salvation. It's that simple. 